What is up my beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira Graves. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And this is my lovely sister Alexa. If you are a new subscriber, you may not know her because it's been literally years since we've done videos together. But if you want to go watch them, I'll link them in the description below. Alexa? Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing so good today. Yay! I'm like so excited. It's so good. And we wanted to give advice basically on body image, navigating eating disorders, disordered eating patterns, and anything to do with like body confidence and self love. Yeah, we're both really passionate about talking about this. Yeah, we work both work in entertainment and film, so you know, there's a lot of emphasis on how you bodies look. Bodies and sizes and all that stuff. So I feel like we both have quite a bit of experience kind of trying to dismantle that and find healthier ways to perceive our bodies and other yeah. people's bodies and the media and all. That. Trigger warning. If you do not want to listen to us talk about eating disorders or any type of body image issues, please click on this video. We don't want to be triggering anyone. But we are also going to be helping answer these questions and give our best advice. And we are not professionals, but we are just going to be speaking from experience. And for context, I am gender fluid if you don't know that. My pronouns are they, them, and she, her. I do experience gender dysphoria from time to time, not all the time. So that's where I'm coming from. I've also had, you know, definitely struggles with my body image and I've I've experienced a little bit of disordered eating patterns as well. And on my side, um, my pronouns are she, her. I have had several eating disorders, so anorexia and bulimia. I also had disordered eating. And then I also have struggled with, I guess, body image in I usually present very feminine and the times when I don't often have been to not get male attention. So I feel like there's also body image stuff related to not wanting to be preyed on. Yeah, I feel that so much. Like my style has shifted a lot over the past few years. In a lot of ways, I have dressed a lot more masculine because of that reason, mm -hmm. because I'm trying to hide myself from people because I don't want to be preyed upon. Like I just don't want to be an object for men to just like objectify my body. But also in some ways, I've found a lot of like confidence in wearing, you know, more masculine clothes. So yeah, I don't know exactly what it is, but I've definitely experienced both of those things. I think this is a good like intro question because it kind of gives background as to why you know the majority of people nowadays have problems with viewing their bodies in a healthy way. So someone asked, do you think the way we were raised contributes a lot to having a negative body image as an adult? Yes. Yes. It has everything oh to do with it. And society and social media makes it worse. If any of you are a little bit older, maybe late 20s, you might have remembered America's Next Top Model. The OC, those shows that we grew up on, mm -hmm. um, where everyone was like really, really skinny. And I feel like that was like the model skinny era where yeah. we were all like, oh my God, like I need my legs to look like a pinky or else I can't exist in society, yeah. which is crazy. But I remember feeling that way. And then now I feel like for the people who are growing up, if the media now and the younger generation are seeing a lot of Instagram, TikTok, influencer, that is kind of doing that again. Yeah, it's like, like skinny. Yeah, it's like you have to be really skinny in the waist, but then like you can have really big boobs and a big butt. You have to have those like proportions that are very difficult to achieve without surgery. Yeah, or Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, or Photoshop. Yeah, and it just kind of keeps like being cyclical. Like we had more positive yeah. body image for a little while with like yeah. different shapes if showing up in the media and then now I feel like we're See, I'm seeing the skinny, really skinny trends coming back. Like, yeah. Oh, if you're naturally like that, awesome. Yeah. But not as a, something to aspire to. No, no. If you're not like that. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. But there are like a lot of really great body neutrality and body positivity accounts I'm seeing on TikTok, which are really great. Mm. Just like effortlessly showing up in their bodies and they know they don't fit the like beauty standard, but like it's so empowering to see these people just like owning their body and how it is and like, yeah. so in some ways we are getting better. <laughs> yeah, and I love your content for that. Thanks. How do you mentally filter out all the diet culture messages society gives us and know which health advice on exercise, food, etc., is actually beneficial and not harmful? Much love to y'all. Well, I find it really helpful to reframe all of that and to focus on what's going to nourish my body the best so I can shop as my best self. And that way it kind of takes the focus away from, oh, if I drink this like tea or I have this smoothie, I'm gonna get a flat stomach. So like switching the intention I found was a really helpful reframe for me. Also when you have good nutrition, I find like there are actual like scientific reports on health, your mental health as well. 
So, you know, just starting with that reframe, I'm gonna nourish my body in the best way possible to support me. And then I find that filter helps to look through advertising as like, okay, like what is this advertisement trying to say to me? Is this matching up with my intention and my filter and my goals? Or is it just gonna be noise? And if it's just noise, it's just noise. Willow agrees. <laughs> Willow's like, yeah, I want fish. Yeah. And I just want this. <laughs> I was personally interested in myself studying nutrition a little bit. Like I didn't end up finishing it, but studying it to the level that I was like, oh, I'm learning more about like nutrients and how they help me to thrive both mentally and physically was actually helpful. So if anyone has an interest in nutrition, I'd say, you just search, learn about how nutrition benefits you on a holistic level. That is so good. Yeah, just like educating yourself on like what is nutritious and what's not, you know, go, going to whole foods, you know, real foods mm -hmm. as opposed to packaged foods. You got your greens, you got your protein, you got, got your hot ginger, you got your kombucha, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, you got your, Alexis is literally eating like chunks of ginger right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, eat your ginger. I'm eating my ginger. <laughs> I don't know how you can eat that. It's kind of like eating a lemon where you're just like, I do that too, I'm a weirdo. I guess I don't have taste. I do have I guess you don't taste. I don't taste. <laughs> Another thing on exercise, you don't have to be doing like weight training or following like an exercise regimen in order to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You can go on walks. Just moving your body at some point every day that's really all that you need. Like I watched this documentary on like the longest living people in the world. It's some place in Italy. Mm -hmm. And they like studied, you know, their nutrition and exercise habits. And one of the things that they did was they weren't going to the gym. They were just like going on nice long walks in nature. Maybe some mm -hmm. of them jogged, maybe biking. Find like the joy in the exercise. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be going crazy. No. Unless you want to. Unless you want to. It's a hobby and you enjoy it or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, it's all about finding a balance. Yeah. You know? Like, I feel like in diet and in exercise, being balanced is like the key. Oh. Let's go into this one because this is a great, great question. How to not fall into old ED habits. I recently went through some intense anxiety that caused me to feel very nauseous for days. I was still forcing myself to eat during that time, but I know I didn't eat enough. The thought, I bet I lost weight, crept into my head. So I weighed myself, ugh, bad idea, and I was right. Now I'm strongly tempted to start restricting so I can lose a few pounds. Yeah, this is a really great question and I can definitely relate to this. Basically, for a little bit of background and context, I had an eating disorder when I was eight. I was anorexic when I was eight. That's so Until young. about 16. Yes, slight segue, our mom, when I was growing up, she helped a lot of people gain confidence through a modeling school, a modeling program. But for me growing up and watching that, I definitely looked at the um, model body type and there was a lot of emphasis I remember on, there were girls around me and people around me all the time getting measured at their waist. There was measuring tapes, people were measuring their proportions. And so I grew up watching that and also there were comments from adults about my weight when I was quite young. So I developed an eating disorder very early and I hit it. I told everyone that I was just trying to eat healthy and I was being picky because I didn't want them. The thing about eating disorders a lot of time is you you know you have it and you're good at trying to protect it. So I definitely did that and it turned into bulimia by the time I was 16. And then in my 20s, it was more just disordered. Mm -hmm. Eating. I've also experienced anxiety to the point where I feel nauseous and can't eat. Um, to the Same. point that sometimes even drinking water upsets my stomach. And a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I was working on a project here actually. Yeah. And I couldn't keep anything down and I had lost a lot, a lot of weight. Yeah. And there was a little voice that crept up in my head that was like, oh, at least you're at least you're getting skinny. And I was like, also judging that voice in my head, but at the same time being like, I don't even have time to focus on this right now. This thought is giving me more anxiety and I already have anxiety and I have so much anxiety that I can't eat. So like this whole thought about wondering if this thought is healthy or toxic is making me more anxious. Something that helped me that I'll share with you is getting to the root of the anxiety in the first place that causes me to feel nauseous. And then what was really helpful was like reframing why I want to be a certain weight. And instead of just, kind of being impulsive and just being like, okay, fine, I'm just gonna skip a meal or like, whatever. Be more mindful about each moment and be like, okay, I'm starting to slip into this mindset. And I know it's not, it's not an easy solution, but I don't think that they're, I think that the best solution is for me has been getting to the root of the thoughts and the conditioning behind the unhealthy thoughts and patterns and stopping them in their tracks before, before they become impulsive. That's great. I feel like mindfulness and self-awareness is like the first step to healing so many things. 
and dismantling your thoughts and questioning your thoughts and being like, is this serving me in the highest possible way? Or is this a belief that I took on from someone else? Yeah. Or from what I saw on television or social media or wherever? Is this thing to restrict maybe your food? Is it going to help you serve your highest purpose on earth? And I know a lot of people don't know that. Like, mm -hmm. know your fucking highest purpose on earth? Like, shut up, Kira. But yeah, <laughs> super important. When you restrict your eating, like you also just don't feel good in the brain. Your body and your mind are so intertwined. When I start to restrict my food, when I have in the past, I just feel like tired and maybe I can't accomplish what I need to accomplish. I can't do my work. You know, I'm prioritizing something else over what is actually more important. And so just realizing like in doing that, you're also sacrificing something that maybe is more important in the long run. Does that make sense? Bam. That's a good point. Thanks. Very, yeah. How do I support friends who are recovering from EDs or are at risk to fall back into it? I wouldn't comment on their body really at all. Like, don't say like, oh, you you look so good, you've lost weight, or you look so good, you've gained weight. Avoiding that topic altogether. Yeah. Is helpful because then you don't place as much emphasis on how they look but more so like their mental health. Like, how's your mental health, you know? Wow, you look so happy right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something to do with, wow, your presence really uplifted me today. Other types of compliments or comments. Yes. And also, don't talk about your body issues around them. Yes. Oh that is going to be so difficult. Because you know when you see someone who's like, oh my God, I'm so this. And it's like, comes from a place of like, yeah, you've, everyone's struggling with their body issues, but it can, just draw attention to that. If someone's really trying to train their brain not to think about body issues, it can be a, a reminder that can be quite triggering. Yes. Like I find that like judging our bodies is contagious. It is. And if we can like focus our minds on other topics and other things with our peer groups, yes, yes Willow, um, we can all redirect our focus to something more positive and uplifting. Willow's been through a weight journey as well. And now like, now that I feel like she's in a better mental headspace, her weight has, you know, evened out to a very healthy weight for her. And I think that's the same with humans. Yeah. Yeah. I totally, yeah, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Like, I feel like our bodies reflect, they're like, give us clues as to what's going on in here too. They do. So it's like, oh, something's going on here. What does this mean about like, my soul and my mind. And yes. You know what's going on in here? They're so interconnected people. You know how you get sick or get run down when you're like stressed and overworking yourself? It's the same thing. Yeah. It's all intertwined. That makes sense because when I couldn't, I couldn't eat all those foods. When I like worked on my mental health and processed trauma, I started to be able to eat more food that I thought I was allergic to. Yeah. Well, I mean the celiac, like the gluten. Celiac stain. <laughs> That's <laughs> not as bad. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it isn't as bad. How did you not feel guilty when you sized up in clothing? I saw a video of you talking about a new waist size. Yes. I did make a video, I think last summer, about how like from the time that the pandemic started, to now or to like last year, I gained like three waist sizes or four. My weight has fluctuated a lot. If you wanna hear more about that, you can go watch that video. I will link it below. It was also a matter of me going from a teenage body into like a, you know, mature adult female body who's like, it's my prime time to have children. <laughs> Get it, Gary, you bring me again? Yeah, I know, right? Like, what am I waiting for? Yeah. But yeah, I feel like, and I've talked to other friends about this too who are my age, and there is a you know, there's a, a change in your body and that is so normal. And I didn't know this when I was going through it. So I was just like, what's happening? And sometimes it has to do with like your mental health um, and what you're going through at the time. Like also we were all going through a fucking like worldwide pandemic. Like come on now, of course there's gonna be fluctuations in your body. You're fucking stressed. You're like in survival mode. Yeah, when you're in survival mode, well, this is a theory, mm -hmm. your body wants to retain. So especially for people who are AFAB or mm -hmm. you know, female bodies, we evolved to to carry extra energy on our bodies because we could get pregnant at any moment in the, in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and having extra weight in times of stress and survival would help us survive and carry children if we needed to further the species. So like, I feel like it's a evolutionary defense mechanism. Yeah, that's the theory. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Take it or leave it, that's the theory. If it resonates, go with it. Yeah, the more <laughs> safe I feel my body most yeah. of the time, then I find like I level into a weight that is typically healthier for me. Yes. And it, it's a weight that shows up when my mindset is healthy and that's how I know that it's healthy. And nothing really changes with my eating yeah. or physical activity. It's just like, oh, does my body feel safe? Do I feel safe in my body? Or do I not feel safe in my body? And it makes the biggest difference. And 
throughout your cycle and throughout your the month, your weight is gonna fluctuate. And Alexa was saying earlier, it doesn't even have to do with you know physical like gaining fat or intake of calories. Like yeah, it's hormonal, and your body is gonna change all month, and it's different than a man's body. So like someone who has male hormones running through their body, they yes. are going to be more consistent. Whereas female bodies, our hormones change every month. It's a cycle, and we're gonna gain weight. We're gonna bloat. We're gonna take on water, yep. um, our appetite's gonna change throughout the month, it's not consistent, so like some weeks you're gonna be like, oh, I'm really craving this, or like in other weeks you're like, oh, I'm feeling like this, and that's like, like your body's indication of like the type of nutrients that you need. Yeah, um, listening to it, listening to your body, enjoy, like giving your body what it needs yeah. at the specific time of the month, we're not robots, we're not like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can't just like, exist on like a very, I don't know, and different needs and a yes. prize. And bitch, if you want a burger, Eat a burger, and if you want a french fry, eat a french fry. <laughs> Someone says, I'm a size medium, and I always feel like I'm not reaching any beauty standard. It's so painful. I just wanna say that like sizes don't reflect how healthy you are, or how beautiful you are, or the percentage of body weight even that you have on your body, because we have to take into consideration like some people have bigger bones. Some people's frames are bigger. Yeah. Some people's are smaller. I definitely went through this where I was like, I used to be an extra small, like now a medium, but I feel healthy and I feel good. That's all that matters at the end of the day. It is, yeah, and changing, reframing our beauty standards. If something's not working for you in terms of beauty standards and it makes you feel bad about the beautiful physical body that you currently have, then I'd say reframe it. I feel like once you start appreciating your beauty and who you are rather than a comparison, you notice it more. Our bodies are keeping us on this earth right now. And they, our bodies are doing so many things behind the scenes that we, are, we aren't telling it to. Remember that like our bodies aren't just to exist to be pretty. You know, your digestive system is digesting your food. My heart is on point. My liver is filtering out the toxins. Thinking about it in that way, in a more like scientific way, I guess helps sometimes. Yeah. How do you deal with weight gain during an ED recovery? Well, I made a promise to myself in high school that I would never gain a pound over my high school weight, which was 110. <laughs> I was like, ah, I got this. No problem, I'm just gonna keep this weight my whole life. And I was like, very intense about that. I broke that promise and uh, I'm not mad about it, but. <laughs> so for me, honestly, it was very gradual. And like I said, I still struggled with disordered eating into my early 20s. It wasn't until appreciating your body for what it does for you that helped me reframe it. Also, it just came up to a point with or I was just like, fuck this. Like, fuck this. I'm not disliking the way that I look because it's not fitting some standard that I've kept for myself in my head. Like, if my body feels best at this weight, I'm gonna not compare myself to this aspect of myself, this criteria that I'm clinging to. For what? For mm. what? Like, it just made me miserable. Yeah. So I think I just also reached a point where I was like, fuck this. Mm -hmm. And it was hard, like, it, you know, from eight to like 23. Or like that's a lo that was a long time yeah. for me to process eating disorders. So I think for me it took so it was such a long process that I just got fed up. As a non-binary AFAB person, how do you help focus on body love on mask days? Mask days to me means that my female body doesn't suit how I perceive my gender, whether I dress masculine or feminine. Because some days I might feel feminine, but might not, you know, relate to the female body. I know it's confusing. Sounds confusing, but it happens. Giving myself the freedom to take my time in the morning getting dressed and just making sure I have that period of time to, cause I am going to cycle through a lot of different types of clothing. My partner knows as well, like it takes me a long time to get ready cause I'm like, am I feeling like this matches my gender identity today? Like, my goodness. It, it's so, so, it's a whole other level. It is. Ready. Having a lot of different options in my closet. And I'm just talking about clothing right now. I'll have different types of pants that flatter my body in different ways different types of shirts, different accessories, different types of makeup. And in terms of like my body, when I'm like, shit, I hate my boobs. Like I wish I didn't have these hips. Feeling icky like that, I'm just like, you know what? It's just my vessel. It's my vessel. It is the flesh cage that my soul has chosen for this lifetime so that I can be on this planet. You know, it's helping me to exist here. Wow, I didn't realize it was like, 
You need to give yourself extra time in the morning. Oh yeah. Sense, it like depends how you want to express yeah. or how you feel authentically expressed. Yeah. So the next question is how to stop counting calories. Something that helped me to stop counting calories was again learning about nutrition yes. and reframing on how to best support me. Also, my mental health wasn't doing very good. I was having lots of panic attacks. So my focus all of a sudden got turned to what type of nutrition would help support a healthy brain. Find another way to focus on your well-being and supporting yourself in a way that comes from a place of love rather than you know restriction or trying to adhere to a specific criteria in your mind that you want yourself to look like. I used to have this app, and I don't know if you did too, but it, it counted my calories. Like I would input like everything I ate that day and my exercise and like, you know, I tried to make sure that like I wasn't eating more than I was burning off. And like, I just think that those types of apps and those types of programs are just like way too strict and hard, like on my body personally. I'm not gonna like hate on this too bad, but personally, I don't love Fitbits. But I mean, I'm sure they do help some people to be like, did I get my daily exercise? I don't know, what do you think about that? It's a tool. You can either use it feeling good about it or you can use it feeling bad about it. So it all comes down to your tensions, your feelings. If you use it and you're like, oh, I'm super excited to like know how many steps I took today. Mm -hmm. And oh, it tells me when my heart rate is higher. So I know if I'm getting stressed, it gives me a little reminder. Mm -hmm. If there's like, if you're using like a knife, if you can use a knife to chop vegetables or you can use a knife to cause harm. Yeah, So that's so true. Wow, yeah. Uh -huh. I had a couple questions that were like, how do I know if I'm exercising for the wrong reasons? Or how do I know if I'm exercising just because I like it? And I think just the being mindful mm -hmm. and the being self-aware of your intentions before you go into it. Like if you have the thought, oh, I'm gonna go exercise. You know, it could be one of two ways. Is it, oh, I need to exercise because I ate too much today and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's like a negative thing, or is it like, oh, I wanna exercise today because I wanna feel the you know, positive endorphins, or you know, I wanna sweat it out and feel really good. Like, I feel like I've shifted my perception of exercising a lot like in the past few years. Being intuitive, intuitive eating and intuitive exercise, which is what you are saying, like what does my body feel like it needs? Sometimes you might wanna do like a slow stretch. Your body needs something more restorative. Sometimes you might feel like your body wants like do sprints or just run up some stairs and like feel that burn. Other times your body might be like, I want to do nothing today. Yeah. And it's honoring how you feel. And then when you do the exercise, it feels like you're serving what your body needs and wants. Yes. I feel like we've kind of covered the majority of the questions. Mm -hmm. And if we haven't, if you have more, please let us know yeah. and we could maybe do a part two. But I really, really hope that this video was helpful to you. Um, please let us know in the comments below. We want the best for you. And we just, really we do. just, we love you all so much. Just know that recovery is in yeah. your future, okay? It is. Yes, it is. It is possible. And I feel like even the fact that, you know, those of you who are asking these questions is an indication that like you're on the path to feeling more positively about your bodies. Yeah. You got this. Oh my God, yeah. If we got through that, if you got through that, if whatever, you got it in you too. And asking questions, not judging yourself. Asking questions to the right people that you can trust. Yeah. A big obstacle to healing anything is judgment <laughs> for having, you know, an eating disorder or disordered eating and the shame that's associated with that. So I want you to first of all, just let go of that shame and guilt because you deserve to love yourself. If you struggle with it, it's okay. It's okay, it's we got okay. you. We got Gravester hug. <laughs> Hugs are so healing. They are. We love you. Love you. We are thinking about you. I will see you in my next video, folks. Go follow Alexa on all her social media. Uh, if you have any questions, pop in my DMs. Hey. I answer them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> love you. Mwah. Love you.